begin to worship him. She poured perfume on him, mm -hmm. anointed his head, and kissed him repeatedly, yes. poured spices and more perfume on him. And the people couldn't believe what they were seeing. And Simon was probably in shock. Simon was saying to himself, if this man knew who that woman was and what she was, he would never dare let her do these things to him. And you remember the parable that Jesus gave as a result of this scene. Jesus was teaching some lessons on the subject of forgiveness. In the parable Jesus gave, you'll remember, he was talking about a person who owed a large debt and another who owed a small debt. Both were forgiven. <coughs> Jesus asked Simon, which one will love more? And Simon said, I guess the one who was forgiven more. And Jesus said, you're exactly right. He was teaching lessons about forgiveness to a self-righteous man who saw no need of forgiveness and to a woman who was living in the deepest kind of sin. First, he was teaching forgiveness is for just a few, huh? for all. Forgiveness is for all. In the parable, a small debt was owed and a large one both were forgiven. In other words, it doesn't matter how small or how big the sin, praise God, there is forgiveness through Christ. Amen. How many of you can shout amen to that? Amen. amen the Lord. Next, he was teaching there were sins of flesh and sins of the spirit. Sins of the flesh, everyone knew the sins of the woman. They knew what she was. But sins of the spirit, no one recognized. Simon did not recognize his sin of selfishness and hypocrisy. Next, he was teaching that there are wrong deeds that we do and things left undone that should have been done. Jesus was saying to Simon, when I came into the room, you didn't treat me like all the others. You didn't show me the kindness you showed all the others. And Simon knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. I'll tell you, pride is a deadly sin. It is a deadly sin, the sin of pride. Yes, everyone knew the sins of the woman, but only Jesus saw and knew Simon's hidden sin. And Simon said to himself, if this man was as smart as he thinks he is, he would know what this woman was. And before he could get those words out of his mouth, Jesus read his mind. Jesus said, Simon, let me tell you a story. And he went on to give, to give that parable. Next, Jesus was saying that grace, grace is what saves us. Aren't you glad for that unmerited favor? We don't deserve it, not a bit more than anything. But Jesus extends to us that unmerited favor. All we have to do is reach out with an arm of faith and accept it. Hallelujah. Now I want you to look at a verse. Get your Bible and turn to Romans, the third chapter. And let's look at this verse, a familiar verse. Romans, the third chapter, verses 23 and 24. Verses 23, 24, Romans 3. And these familiar words go like this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His, what? Grace. Grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? For by grace are you saved, that not of yourselves. It is a gift, a gift of God. Well, the woman looked to Jesus. She carried that sin load far too long, 
Finally, she put her faith in the one who says, I forgive. Now I want you to notice something about this woman. When she entered that room, she had eyes only for Jesus. Do you have eyes only for Jesus today? Mm. And because of her faith in Jesus, she was forgiven. Another familiar verse, if you'd like to turn there and read with me, 1 John 1 and verse 9. Another familiar verse, 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to what? Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let me ask you something about this woman. How did she know she was forgiven? How do we know we're saved? How do we know we're forgiven? How did she know? Jesus said so. Boy, that's a good answer, and I appreciate that. How did she know? Because Jesus told her she was forgiven. Did she feel something? Well, she might have. She might have. But do we have to feel something to know we're forgiven? No. But I think a good feeling does come knowing we're forgiven. That's something to praise God about. And he said to the woman, I want you to look at this. This is the last verse of the seventh chapter of Luke. Verse 50. Turn there if you would for just a moment. And there's a key word here that I love. Luke the seventh chapter, verse 50. Jesus speaking to the woman. He said to the woman, your faith has what? Mm. Huh? Saved. saved you. Go in peace. I like that word saved. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we kind of have a tendency to shy away from that word. I like that word. If someone on the street asks you, are you saved, what do you tell them? By God's grace, I am saved. Praise the Lord. Saved. After that woman left, she was going to be criticized. Ridiculed, marked, and mocked. She wouldn't have that continuous emotional eye. She would have to stand on the promise of Jesus. You are forgiven. Praise God. In the parable, Jesus was teaching that forgiveness costs something. Anything that is lasting. Anything that is worthwhile costs somebody something along the way. In the parable, Jesus was talking about the two debtors. Both debts were paid. My friends, this morning I say to you, your sin and my sin cost heaven everything that it had. Everything that it had. Because it costs the life of Jesus himself. Neighbors, I believe today that one drop of the blood that was shed on Calvary is enough to save this world over a thousand times. Amen. Amen. Do you know that some churches do not preach about the blood any longer? Did you know that some churches have ripped out of their song books every song that pertains to the blood? Did you know that? That's happening. They say it's too gross, too messy to think about. But I'm glad for the blood today. Amen. We are saved through the precious blood to shed on the cross of Calvary. Now I want you to look at this verse, Romans the 5th chapter, Romans the 5th chapter, verses 8 and 9. Romans 5, verses 8 and 9. But God demonstrated his own love toward us 
and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, much more than having been justified by his what? Blood. Blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. I believe in the blood today. I'm thankful for the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, no remission of sin. Amen. Church membership will not get us to heaven. Amen. Baptism will not get us to heaven. True. My dad may be the pastor of the church. That won't make it. The only thing that will get me from this world to the next is having the precious blood applied to my heart and life. Mm. The blood has never lost its power and will never lose its power to save lost sinners. And I heard something many, many years ago and I've never forgotten. A little saying that goes like this. Dark, the sin that soiled man's nature. Long the distance that he fell, far removed from hope and heaven, near to deep despair and hell. But there was a fountain open, and the blood of God's own Son purifies the soul and reaches deeper than the stain of sin has gone. Praise the Lord for full salvation. God still lives upon his throne. And I know the blood still reaches deeper than the stain has gone. Can you say amen? amen? And it goes on to say, when with holy throngs we're standing in the presence of the King, and our souls are lost in wonder as the white-robed choir sings, then we'll praise the name of Jesus with the millions around the throne. Praise him for the blood that reaches deeper, deeper than the stain has gone. When the woman left that room, she was free. Others were still bound. Simon was still bound by his greed and hypocrisy. But when the woman left that room, she was free. Free. You may say, well, Roy, why bring such a simple message like this? Here's why. I read about a survey some time back, and the survey revealed that most Christians, and this was a survey that was conducted across the board, Seventh-day Adventist churches, Baptist, Methodist, you name it. Most Christians are not sure about whether or not they have truly been forgiven. Isn't that sad? Oh, we have all of the beliefs and doctrines. Oh, we, we, we've got that down. But many of us are not sure about whether or not we have truly been forgiven. Do you know that one of the devil's most effective tools in discouraging Christians is to create doubts slowly but surely. He'll create doubts in our mind about whether or not we have really been forgiven. Isn't that sad? And if we let the devil create those doubts, we will live a life of total defeat. I want to live in victory today. How about you? Amen. I want us to look at one more verse. One more verse. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. And it says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man his thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to 
our God, for he will what? Abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me ask you a question today. Have you allowed the old devil to gradually creep in and create doubts in your mind about whether or not you have truly been forgiven? There may be someone like that here today. I hope not, but it could be. My prayer is that all of us here today will, live, will leave knowing and having the blessed assurance that every sin is under the blood. Under the blood, forgiven, never to be remembered against us again. I heard a story about a little fellow. Where's that mic? Got there. Got that here. This little fellow. <coughs> went to the dentist every six months for a checkup. And uh, he was a Christian, loved the Lord. And uh, there in the dentist's waiting room was religious literature, magazines. And this old fellow picked up a magazine and uh, he read something that blessed him. And there with a room full of patients there in the waiting room. He got so blessed he couldn't help it and out he came with praise the Lord. And, uh, and it caused quite a commotion and the dentist came out and said, what's going on here? And the old fellow said, well doc, I'll tell you what. I got to reading something here in this religious publication that blessed me so much. I just had to say praise the Lord. And I couldn't help myself. And I apologize. And the dentist said, well, sir, you need, you need, you need to cool that. You might, you might sort of turn off some of my patients. Well, he said, I'm sorry, I apologize. Well, six months later, the old boy came back for another checkup. And uh, he grabbed one of the religious magazines. And he began to read, and something he read blessed him. And out it came again. Praise the Lord! And everybody is about scared the whole room to death. And the, the old dentist comes out and says, what in the world is going on? He said, oh, it's you again. He said, I thought I told you last time to cool it. You're disturbing my patience. He said, well, Doc, I'm so sorry. I read something in here that blessed me so much. I couldn't help myself, and I apologize again. But then it says, well, from now on, let's watch that. Well, between that visit and the next visit, the dentist got smart and removed all of the religious literature there. And he said, there, now that'll, that'll take care of that old boy. Well, sir. Six months later, here he comes again. And uh, he's looking for something religious to read. He couldn't find anything. And he finds the magazine on oceanography. And he starts reading. And all of a sudden, you guessed it. <laughs> Praise the Lord! And out comes the dentist again. What's going on? He says, well, man, I thought I took care of this problem. I removed all of my religious literature and magazines. What are you praising the Lord for now? He said, well, Doc, it's like this. I was reading about the ocean. I forget just where it is. But it says here the deepest part of the ocean is almost nine miles deep. And the dentist said, well, so what? He said, I just got to thinking that's where my sins are buried. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah is right. Jesus takes those confessed sins and he casts them into the sea of forgetfulness. And when he does that, he posts a no fishing sign right there. Mm -hmm. No one can bring those sins up against you. They are forgiven. 
forgiven, forgotten forever. How many of you can say hallelujah this morning? Amen. Babe, I want you to play something. Now I want to ask you this question. Have you allowed the old devil to creep in? And slowly, slowly but surely begin to create doubts in your mind about whether or not you have truly been forgiven. That could be the case here today. Could be. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in just a moment. There may be someone like that here today and then there are those of us who are praying for someone else, a lost loved one. Maybe you're not feeling so good today. Maybe you're sick. You need a special touch. Maybe you're carrying a burden that only you and the Lord know about. And then there may be someone here today we never know, Rick. We never know. There may be someone here who would like to say yes to Jesus of the Holy Spirit. So how many with me would raise your hand to heaven and say, Brother Roy, when you have this prayer, pray for me. I have a need here today. Raise your hands all over. All over. Would you stand? Here's what we're going to do. If you raised your hand and you have a need, there may be someone who would like to come and say, Lord, I want to know for sure. I want to leave here knowing that every sin is under the blood, separated from me as far as the east is from the west. And I want to leave here this morning with a blessed assurance that every sin is forgiven. Maybe you're coming forward to stand in the place of someone else. Whatever the need is, if you've raised your hand, we're not going to say, but as Amy plays, I'm going to ask you to come and allow me to have a prayer with you here around the front. There's room for all of us. If you raise your hand, come. I'll wait for you. Come on. Come. If you raise your hand.
for the pastor and he's away. I pray your blessing. I pray this church shall grow and prosper. Bless those who are in leadership positions. And I would not close this prayer without saying, Lord, we do love you today. We love you. Thank you for Calvary, for the precious blood that was shed there in our place. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the promise of Jesus' soon return. We are homesick for heaven. And we long to kneel at his feet and to have the privilege of thanking him throughout eternity for all that he has done for us. So thank you, Lord, for hearing this humble prayer. For we have prayed it in the sweet and precious name of Jesus. And for his sake and all of God's children here shouted, Amen and Amen. Stick with me for a moment. Amy is playing an old favorite of ours, He's All I Need, He's All I Need. Could we sing that little chorus together? Sing it with me. He's all I need. Anyway. <laughs>